the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Welcome to this service of Holy Communion at St Margaret's, and particularly welcome to those who are joining us online for this service. It's great to have you with us, and it'll be wonderful when you're back here to join us. But thank you for your presence as it is. Let us pray. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts be open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind and with all thy strength. This is the first commandment. And the second is like, namely this, thou shalt love thy neighbour as thyself. There is none other commandment greater than these. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Lord, have mercy upon us and incline our hearts to keep this law. Let us pray. O Lord God, who see us, that we put not our trust in anything that we do, mercifully grant that by thy power we may be defended against all adversity, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The epistle is written in the 11th chapter of the second epistle of the Apostle Paul to the Corinthians, beginning at the 19th verse. Ye suffer fools gladly, seeing ye yourselves are wise. For ye suffer if a man bring you into bondage, if a man devour you, if a man take hold of you, if a man exalt himself, if a man smite you on the face. I speak as concerning reproach, as though we had been weak. Howbeit, whereinsoever any is bold, I speak foolishly, I am bold too. Are they Hebrews? So am I. Are they Israelites? So am I. Are they the seed of Abraham? So am I. Are they ministers of Christ? I speak as a fool. I am more. In labours more abundant, in stripes above measure, in prisons more frequent, in deaths oft. Of the Jews five times received I forty stripes, save one. Thrice I was beaten with rods, once I was stoned. Thrice I suffered shipwreck, a night and, the day, and a day I have been in the deep. In journeyings often, in perils of waters, in perils of robbers, in perils of mine own countrymen, in perils by the heathen, in perils in the city, in perils in the wilderness, in perils in the sea, in perils among false brethren, in weariness and painfulness, in watchings often, in hunger and thirst, in fastings often, in cold and nakedness, besides those things that are without which that which cometh upon me daily, the care of all the churches, who is weak and I am not weak, who is offended and I burn not. If I needs glory, I will glory of the things which concern my infirmities, the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which is blessed for evermore, knoweth that I lie not. Here endeth the epistle. The Holy Gospel is written in the gospel according in the eighth chapter of the gospel according to St. Luke, beginning at the fourth verse. Glory be to thee, O Lord. When much people were gathered together and they were come to Jesus out of every city, he spake by a parable. A sower went out to sow his seed, and as he sowed, some fell by the wayside, and it was trodden down, and the fowls of the air devoured it. And some fell upon a rock, and as soon as it was spring, sprung up, it withered away, because it lacked moisture. And some fell among thorns, and the thorns sprang up with it and choked it. And other fell on good ground, and sprang up, and bare fruit an hundredfold. 
And when Jesus had said these things, he cried, He that hath ears to hear, let him hear. And his disciples asked him, saying, What might this parable be? And he said unto you, It is given to know the mysteries of the kingdom of God, but to others in parables, that seeing they might not see, and hearing they might not understand. Now the parable is this, The seed is the word of God. Those by the wayside are they that hear, then cometh the devil and taketh away the word out of their hearts, lest they should believe and be saved. They on the rock are they which, when they hear, receive the word with joy, and these have no root, which for a while believe, and in time of temptation turn away. And that which fell among thorns are they which, when they have heard, go forth, and are choked with cares and riches and pleasures of this life, and bring no fruit to perfection. But that on the good ground are they which in an honest and good heart, having heard the word, keep it, and bring forth fruit with patience. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to thee, O Christ. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Ghost of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of the Father. And he shall come again with glory to judge both the quick and the dead whose kingdom shall have no end. And I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Lord and giver of life, who proceedeth from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spake by the prophets. And I believe one Catholic and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins. And I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. May I speak in the name of God, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. It's not often on the Radio 4 business programme at 6.15 in the morning that you get a bit of a laugh. Uh, but actually, last Friday morning, that is exactly what happened. A rather bumptious young reporter, who I hadn't heard on that particular programme before, decided to interview Alison Rose, who I need not explain to some of you as the CEO of NatWest. And it was very funny right from the start. I thought this interview is not going well. There's a great gap uh, between where she is and was determined to say what he, where he is and wants her to say. And uh, he started by saying, you are absolutely amazing. You've turned that West round. How marvelous the profits that you've had. Uh, this is extraordinary. You must be the most amazing woman. I said, actually, it's not me at all. She said, I've done my bit but lots of other colleagues have done theirs. She said, you're exaggerating. No, no, she said. There is an absolute limit to what I can do, but actually everyone else has really pulled their weight, and that's why we're in the position we are today. He decided quite wisely to move on because she wasn't going to give any ground at all. And uh, he said, no, I suppose all these profits will be going back to shareholders. All these shareholders will be getting even richer than they've ever got before. Uh, and uh, she said, no, she said, most of it will go back to the government, who actually own quite a lot of us, and we're desperate to get them to the point where they own none of us. But surely you'll give lots. No, she said, that's not where it's going. She said, so you've been really successful. You're going to give all this money back to the, 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 the government. 
You must be a really aggressive bank still, in spite of all the nice things you say. Surely when your staff meet members of the public, it's an aggressive interview. She said, well, I can tell you, she said. I, quite by coincidence, listened in to a, half, to, to a dozen and a half calls last Thursday afternoon when I had a spare hour and a half. She said, I was really impressed by the way my colleagues listened and they responded creatively and positively to everything that was happened. There was a great gap at that point and we can all imagine uh, what, how that interview could have continued had uh, they not run out of time. There was the interviewer determined to get his point across and Rose determined to get the facts and the reality across. And something similar was happening here between the Apostle Paul and the Corinth some of the Corinthian Christians. I never thought of the CEO of NavWest and the Apostle Paul as similar before. They'll have a lot to talk about in heaven, but they were on this particular situation. The Corinthians essentially were saying, we've got it sorted. It isn't easy. We're wise, they said. We have that wisdom which is both human and divine. But we're going through a hard time being bullied and everything's difficult, but actually that's what God has called us to do and it's a sign of our wisdom. And Paul wrote back and essentially said, you may think that, but you've got it wrong. He talked about the security he enjoyed because of his own background and the sacrifices that he'd made and we heard them all in that extract from 2 Corinthians. He said, the difference though between us is I can look at Jesus and he knows that I'm living with integrity in response to his call. There is a reality about my faith and not a cliche or a prejudice. Of course, that's exactly what Rose was saying about NatWest. But as we sit here, and those of you who are joining us online, sit wherever you are at any point, there is a sense that all of us are called to be those who can say, I've looked to Jesus, and he is clear that I'm living in the way that he would want, and in response to his invitation, I'm living with integrity and I'm not pretending anything or trying to big myself up as a better Christian than I am. It's not easy to be a Christian here in the city, sometimes very difficult. But the thing that matters is we can look to Jesus and hear him by his spirit saying, you're living as I would want you to live, in work and in the rest of your life. It's a wonderful call, even if it's the most amazingly difficult challenge. And so let your light so shine before all that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven.
In our prayers today, we pray particularly about the situation in Ukraine. We pray for the response from those who lead the nations of Europe and also the United States. We pray for our own country, for Her Majesty the Queen, for the government and parliament, and among our own congregation. We pray for those who have come back to work and those who are coming back to work in the near future. And we pray for safety and wisdom for each. Almighty and ever-living God, who by thy holy apostle has taught us to make prayers and supplications and to give thanks for all, we humbly beseech thee most mercifully to receive these our prayers, which we offer unto thy divine majesty, beseeching thee to inspire continually the universal church with the spirit of truth, unity, and concord. And grant that all they that do confess thy holy name may agree in the truth of thy holy word and live in unity and godly love. We beseech thee to save and defend the rulers of the nations, and especially thy servant Elizabeth our Queen and her government, that under her we may be godly and quietly governed. Give grace, O Heavenly Father, to all clergy, that they may, both by, thy life, both by, by their life and doctrine, set forth thy true and lively word, and rightly and duly administer thy holy sacraments. And all thy people give thy heavenly grace, and especially to this congregation here present, that with meek heart and due reverence they may hear and receive thy holy word, truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness all the days of their life. And we most humbly beseech thee of thy goodness, O Lord, to comfort and succour all them who in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity. We pray particularly for those who are discovering at the moment the restructuring taking place, taking place in either their departments or their firms. We pray for all who are seeking a job. And we also bless thy holy name for all thy servants departed this life in thy faith and fear, beseeching thee to give us grace so to follow their good examples that with them we may be partakers of thy heavenly kingdom. Grant this, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. Either do truly and earnestly repent you of your sins and are in love and charity with your neighbours and intend to lead a new life following the commandments of God and walking from henceforth in his holy ways. Draw near with faith and take this holy sacrament to your comfort and make your humble confession to Almighty God, meekly kneeling upon your knees. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all men, we acknowledge and bewail our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed, by thought, word and deed, against thy divine majesty, provoking most justly thy wrath and indignation against us. We do earnestly repent, and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings, the remembrance of them is grievous unto us. The burden of them is intolerable. Have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. For thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please thee in newness of life, to the honour and glory of thy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy hath promised forgiveness of sins to all them that with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto him, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. 
Hear what comfortable words our Saviour Christ saith unto all that truly turn to him. Come unto me, all that travail and are heavy laden, and I will refresh you. So God loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, to the end that all that believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It's very meet, right, and our bounden duty that we should at all times and all places give thanks unto Thee, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, Everlasting God. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify Thy glorious name, evermore praising Thee and saying, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of Thy glory. Glory be to Thee, O Lord Most High. We do not presume to come to this thy table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under thy table, but thou art the same, Lord, whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls washed through his most precious blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him, and he in us. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of thy tender mercy, didst give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made there, by his one oblation of himself once offered, a full, perfect and sufficient sacrifice, oblation and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world. And did institute and in his holy gospel command us to continue a perpetual memory of that his precious death until his coming again. Hear us, O merciful Father, we most humbly beseech thee, and grant that we receiving these thy creatures of bread and wine according to thy Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood. For in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise after supper he took the cup and when he had given thanks he gave it to them saying drink ye all of this for this is my blood of the New Testament which is given for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as oft as ye shall drink it, in remembrance of me. Amen. Draw near with faith, receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you. Eat in remembrance that he died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Let us pray. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, 
And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Almighty God, thou hast fed your people with the living bread from heaven. May this holy food sustain us as we go from here until that day when we come to the place where there is neither hunger nor thirst. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of God which passeth all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen.